Hey, what's up guys? Uh, the new GeoPortal has launched. The rewrite of that site, uh, all the updated code is out on GitHub. And uh, I was going to talk to you a little bit about that because I'm very excited. It uh, launched on Tuesday and uh, software developers should not use the word launch because that should be reserved for spaceships. But uh, it went out there on Tuesday and uh, it's gotten some really good uh, feedback and I really like it. So we're going to take a quick look at that, really just how it looks. We're going to talk more about design than about code and uh, go from there. Maybe I'll show you some code too. Wouldn't be a podcast if you didn't see code that made you want to throw up. So, little reference. Here's the old site. If you just heard a high-pitched scream, uh, that was Brian Timoney, wherever he is right now. Uh, this is bad design. Now, when I made this, I thought it was good design. It was better design than the stuff that we had before. But it's bad design. You get it? It's, it's overwhelming. It is not built for regular human beings. It is not built... When you come to the site, it's not really clear what you're supposed to do. It's just not very good in terms of design. In terms of functionality, it's, it's, it's quite good. Design, hmm. And that was the primary reason why I wanted to rewrite it. It wasn't a functionality thing. If anything, I wanted to remove some functionality. It was really a design, a user experience thing, if you will. Uh, so the new site, you know, I'm sure this is already burned into your retinas. You've probably all taken like, you know, screen captures to, to show your friends what a terrible person I am. This is the new site. Ah, oh, so clean, so pretty. If your site is pretty, you're already, you know, in the top 5% of government websites. So pretty is a thing, pretty is a feature. Here's the new site. It's, uh, you see there's a lot of open space. It's very clear. What are you looking for? You may have even noticed, well, I didn't load it, but when you first load the page, it actually flashes the text very subtly right here saying, eyeballs over here, please. What do you want to find? It's very clear what you're supposed to do. The old site, uh, GIS people tend to think the map is always the most important thing. In most cases, it isn't. It's complementary. In this case, this data was the most important thing. This data that I had to put down to an eight point font to squeeze in the tiny corner that it is allowed with this giant map. Uh, bad design. Here, you have a map that is sized about how it should be sized in terms of its importance to the site. Now let's go find an address. It's going to do our autocomplete thing. And after it finds something, you'll notice that this area became visible and it flashes on this, what do you want to know? And it starts out with photos. You could look at anything you want, look at water. You see this information comes up, not an eight point font, and it has more information than before. It doesn't just tell you what something, say, you're in a critical protection area. You, you know, you need to know what that means. So it gives you more information. It gives it in a readable way. You'll notice it turned a layer on, on the map. Uh, you didn't have to go hunting down a layer controls or God help you adjusting the opacity on overlay. You just went and added something to your map. It just did that automatically based on what you wanted to know. User didn't have to do anything. And you can just pick whatever if you get something with a location, like say, uh, libraries. Well, here's your nearest libraries and how far away they are. All of these are clickable, and you can see that hover state change on the map, and you click it, it'll show you where that location is, and in that pop-up window, you can get directions. You can click right on directions or data browser. Data browser is, a, is basically what I turned the old geo portal into, just for the crazy people that wanted to do all that stuff or you can pull it straight up on Google Maps. And uh, the site is its responsive design. Everything will, will shift and move. It will even, if you're on phone mode, like uh, 
it'll stretch down so it goes single column. When you're in phone mode or very small space mode, when it does the overlay or does the reports, it will pull them up in this little window on the map in the pop-up instead of having a bunch of gigantic horizontal scrolling fitting it in there. So the site's responsive. Um, the big thing, one of the big things with it is uh, this embed map. I had made a little GitHub thing to make an iframe for basically whatever's coming off of a WMS server. And I did that ages and ages ago. Well, I wanted to make GeoPortal so you could take the base functionality and customize a little iframe and then stick it in your whatever you know shitty CMS you're stuck behind and it'll, it'll just work there with all the basic core functionality. So what you do is you click on this embed map. It'll say, do you want to see a search box? Maybe you just want to have it go to a particular location. And you don't want to be looking for anything else. Like say it is the website for this specific library. You say, I don't want a search box. Do you want to start with the selected location? And this shows up because we have a selected location. Which goes, sure. Now, what do you want to show when you get there? That's that, what do you want to know drop down box. And you can pick anything you want. You could pick nothing. We could pick fire, libraries, parks, and let's say we want to make the default selection when you have something selected, parks. Now this is your iframe code. You can adjust the height. Uh, you know, there's some suggestions or you can just you know type them in here or whatever. You can just take that, select it, put it right on your site, and off it'll go. And it'll look something like, uh, let's see, do I have it somewhere? Yep. Yeah. Something like this where we passed it, we had a location selected and we picked parks um, and it goes straight to that location and pulls up the info we know in parks. Notice it does the same thing since these are locations, you can click on them and go to that location. So you can take this and embed it right in your uh, uh, SharePoint or God help you or whatever you've got right on your site and all the basic functionality of GeoPortal is available to you in that iframe. You don't have to um, uh, link back to this, you know, say, hey, here's our CMS site for this thing. Now click on this so you can actually go to the thing. You don't have to do that. So that's really cool. It also does, um, it's basically using the uh, history API if it's available. So you notice up in the address bar, it's writing out uh, ID for a location, uh, what we're currently want to know, voting and the latitude and longitude. Latitude and longitude isn't, you know, have to have it there. It just avoids that flash when the site first loads and it zooms out to the full thing and then it finds out the latin long of that other thing and then zooms in there. It can just go straight there if you include that. So we can do stuff like, uh, you know, go backwards and forwards based on, you know, our history locations and, and th what you wanted to know or, or whatever. Um, and that's really awesome. That allows, besides the history, allows for deep leaking into the site. If I just refresh this page, go straight back to that location and voting, which is what we had selected. That's really about it, the core functionality. I did include this little tiny button here is a take me to my location. Um, it's basically just a, a geolocation API. If it's available for your browser, that shows up. I figured if you're going to make something usable for phones, that's not a bad thing to have in there. And it's so tiny that in terms of your visual hierarchy, it's really not getting in the way. So that's how the site works, how it looks. See, it's very open, very clean, and hopefully very, very friendly. With the embed functionality, it can really get itself into anything. Uh, in terms of the technology behind it, it's using Bootstrap for all the pretty and the responsive and uh, some of the JavaScript APIs like the carousel for images and uh, tooltip. Uh, notice what I did with this tooltip. I used to have like this, you know, embed that would pull up a YouTube video for 
help people to search because that's where people face plant uh, no matter how easy you make it to search where users have to input stuff with our keyboard that's the place they're probably going to face plant instead of making another video i did an animated gif because that's a thing now and uh, i found a way to do something where it's it's uh, actually useful so there's an animated gif showing you how to do a search um, but that's in a bootstrap tooltip. So use this bootstrap. Other thing I should talk about functionality. You don't have like an identify button. If you click on something, it identifies it. So you don't have to go, you don't have to have a big toolbar telling you what your click event's going to be. Bootstrap for the pretty and the responsive and some widgets. Um, jQuery and underscore for jQuery for DOM manipul manipulation underscore for all the awesome things it does and for templating. All the reports are underscore templates. Uh, this worked out really, really well. You, the first time I tried to do templating, I, I always struggled with the fact that when I was done, I had so much written so much more than I had to before. When I just had this little function that generated a table based on a, a record set and some other parameters or a, a JSON object. So, underscore templating lets you do stuff. It's so much prettier and nicer to edit. You can add a lot more stuff. You make things much more customized. And the way it's doing it is those are all separate HTML files. So it's only gonna load what you need and it loads that via jQuery and then processes it, processes it through underscore when it does that, it saves it to a local variable, or a global variable, um, so you only have to load it once per session, and if you have local storage, which you probably do, uh, it stores it in local storage, so you never have to fetch it again. And what the grunt does when you make a build to put the site in production, it has some replace code to change a version number. And if it sees if the version number is changed, it basically wipes out your local storage, so you're not getting out of sync. Uh, jQuery underscore leaflet, of course, because it's leaflet, and leaflet is awesome. Um, and that's about it. That's all the technology behind it. I've borrowed code from people here and there, um, which hopefully I've put in their names in the source code comments someplace. If I haven't, I apologize and let me know like that uh, storing stuff in local storage was a script I got from, let's see, I'm going to be embarrassed if I didn't, uh, I think I just linked to the site, yeah, I linked to the GitHub uh, the guy that did that, Gazler, um, he's the one that wrote that code. So hopefully I've done that whenever I borrowed somebody's code. Um, if I haven't, see your code in there and I haven't put your name or link to your side of that, let me know and I'll put it in there and apologies ahead of time. Uh, the code itself is very neat for me. I mean, it's still shit. It's my code. But uh, in terms of my code, it's, it's very, very neat. It's uh, like the map.js that does all the mapping stuff is 140. 40 lines of code. Uh, Page.js that does all the page interactions and autocomplete and everything else is like 385 lines of code. So it's very, very simple, almost elegant, if I can use that word. Um, some of the best code I've written. Again, doesn't mean it's good code. It's all relative. It's, uh, what's that phrase? Uh, the worst code you've ever seen is the code you wrote six months ago. As long as that's always true, you're going to go places. If you ever find that's not true, it's either you're either a genius, and if you're watching this, you're not a genius, or uh, you're not developing as much as you should. So this is the best code I've written right now. Six months, I'll look at it, and I will just you know, throw up a low in my mouth. Now, I don't really want to show you any code right now. It's all on GitHub, you can look at it. There is some kind of neat stuff here and there. Like the embed, there's like an embed HTML. It's not like hiding all this stuff and then stuffing it into a page, that would be dumb. 
There's a bit.html, but it shares the exact same uh, JavaScript and CSS. There are a couple of little tiny places. Uh, there's only like two or three of these in the whole app where it checks for the embed container class that's in that embed file. And if it does, it does a couple of extra things. And that's really, there's the spot there and spot there. I think one, one other place. And there's one part of the CSS that does some stuff just for things in that embed frame. And that's it, shares all the same code. I didn't want to get into a situation, and you shouldn't, where you've got your embed stuff and your regular stuff as two sets of code, and it's going to get out of sync, and you're going to hate yourself. Things like uh, like this, you notice this is a location when you hover over it, it's clickable. Basically, in the underscore template, it puts in that data row a, uh, a data for the location and the label. So I have here in this code, just basically when you get to a table row that has that data location, hey, go find that sucker. I should say this is all using PubSub. PubSub is like, there are a few places here and there I might call a separate function just by itself, but it's all generally PubSub. There's a subscription or an event for add marker for when a record is selected. Question is what I call those reports. What do you want to know? And there's a, uh, a event for adding to the history API. So that's all PubSub. Makes it all, all very clean code and makes it so you can dynamically link different things in and out as you need them. That's really about it. I, I'm at that point where I've been staring at this this was a couple months in the making, you know, off and on in between other projects. So it was, you know, probably only a week of really hard work. But I'm at that stage where it's launched. I don't want to look at it for a while. So I'm not going to show you any other code. You can look through it and maybe uh, over the next month or so, if there's something I thought was kind of neat in there, I will show it to you. Anyway. That's the new GeoPortal code is on GitHub. Have at it. It's MIT license. Do whatever you want. Uh, patches are always welcome. So if you see something that just you just want to tear your eyes out, uh, uh, send me an email. Uh, you know, or you know, submit a do a pull request or, or whatever. I'd be more than happy to change it. And that is GeoPortal. I am about ready to start my weekend drinking. So I'm going to sign off. Have a good weekend. See you next month. Bye-bye.